So, my dear ones, here we are, another Sunday already. It's amazing how quickly the week goes and comes and flows and so on. And we continue our wonderful uh, topic of um, understanding more deeply and fully what it is that it really is when we think about freedom of creativity, freedom of thought, freedom of choice, freedom of belief, and freedom of speech. So that we can deeply understand what all of those freedoms have to do with you and me. And of course, under the umbrella of you make the difference. You make the difference. And it is Jane Goodall, whom I admire very much, who reminded us so many times and oft that we must never forget every single solitary day of our lives, we are impacting the whole of life, all of the world, and all there, therein. And so, we make an extreme difference in how we show up and what we're thinking, what we're feeling, what we're believing, and how we're speaking. We make the difference, a huge difference, either on the right, side of life, the light side of life, or the dark side of life. But we're always impacting and being impacted by thought and feeling and belief systems and speech. So our responsibility as unfolding spiritual souls is to be a leader in all of this. We have to lead with the way we think, lead with the way we feel, lead with the, what we believe in, and lead in the way we speak. We're born to be leaders and builders of community and unity and harmony and oneness. And if we're not doing that, we're doing the opposite. We're being divisive. We're being separatists. We're being um, those who create havoc all over the place in one way or another. And so we really have to take this seriously now. And I mean, I read all the time and I hear people talk all the time. They say, well, today of all days, we need to be able to blah, blah, blah. And I say, it's always today. It's always the best of times. It's always the worst of times. And in every time, there are challenges. There are ups and downs. There are ebbs and there are flows. There are cycles. But regardless of what the cycle is that we are in, you and I, because we're standing, we're standing in the belief that we are souls committed to spiritually unfolding, which means releasing the wholeness that is within us out so we can spread it around in the world out there. That's what we're called to. That's why we're here. Why else would we be here? And so for that to happen, what has to happen to you and what has to happen to me? I mean, when it comes to freedoms, 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 you and I have to know and believe deeply and stand in the belief that every single person on this planet has an inherent right, an inherent right to a safe, environment, to clean water, to a roof over their head, for food on their plate, clothing on their back, and the ability to live a life that enables them to thrive. Every single individual has that inherent right. And you and I are the ones who are called to stand in that belief and to stand for it. And to speak in that way, and think in that way, and feel in that way, and believe in that way, and show up as a result of all of that. And most of the time, I think, for most of us on this planet, it goes in this ear, this ear, and out the window. And especially for people of religion, and people especially who are Christians, 
We've got to take that seriously. Love one another. Love your neighbor as you love yourself. Do good to those who hate you. Pray for those who persecute you and despitefully use you. Take care of the hungry. Take care of the needy. Take care of the widow. Take care of the orphan. Take care of the lonely. Take care of those in prison. That's where it states in all of the great scriptures. So unless we are that, we can't call ourselves Christians or any other religious title that we might give ourselves. Because we're no different, as Jesus would say, from sinners. No different at all. Now, this is the time when you and I really have to make this count. Yes, it is, because we're in that kind of cycle right now. It's not that it hasn't happened before, it has. It'll happen again. But we want to move the cycle into redemptive, transforming situations and not total destruction, which is what we can do. We've never had the means before to be able to do it so grandly as we could do that now. We can do that very, just a little press of a button. Now, Mother Earth will take so much, and that's the end of it, and she has proven it all over and throughout history. When she has had enough, as somebody once said and reminded me this morning, Mother Nature will just shake us all off like fleas and start all over again. <laughs> now, I don't want Mother Nature to go there. I don't know about you. But it's getting kind of close to that as, 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 as I'm looking out there. But am I afraid? No, I'm not afraid. Because I believe in the creative process of life. I believe in the way that life works. And I believe that if we work it, this can all be changed for the better. But this is not the time to be people who are dividing, separating, causing all kinds of discomfort, to say the least, and downright chaos, to say the worst whether it's in politics or otherwise. Now, another thing that crossed my path this last night, or was it this morning? I can't remember. It seems to have been a very um, quick night. Uh, but I, I was pondering all of this stuff and wondering whether I should get very, very scared or knock it off. Because this week, there's been a lot going on that has caused me to come close to feeling very, very, very scared. I thought, no. It's not what I'm doing. It's not my MO. I'm not going there. So I've spent a lot of time working on myself, not to go to the scary side of life, but to stand in the principle that I can rely upon the principle and know that life is unfolding the way it should and that life is always in a forward movement, no matter what the appearances look like. But I'm not going to get sucked in to the conversations that would divide me, confuse me, upset me, and cause me grief. And I can remember it was John Mitchum, I said, with, is it Mitchum or Mehem or the, the chap who was working with Tim McGraw and produced a wonderful book on patriotic songs. He said, you know what, America is beyond being angry anymore, America is greatly sad, greatly exhausted, and greatly embarrassed at the moment. That's what America really is. Everybody's going around exhausted, truly, and we don't even know it. But this is having an effect on us, and we mustn't allow, we who are spiritually unfolding, dedicated, committed truth students, cannot allow that to happen cannot allow that to happen. Why would we embrace what we don't believe is the truth? We're not here to do that. We're here to make a difference and to discover the real truth so that it can set us free of all this nonsense and that we can work together. Now, Micah, always one of my favorite, favorite sayings in the scriptures, Old Testament, a long time ago, and this is one translation of what he said. This is what Yahweh asks of you, only this, only this, that you act justly, that you love tenderly, tenderly, that you walk humbly with your God, that you act justly, 
that you love tenderly, that you walk humbly with your God. Now imagine governments of the world who could act justly, love tenderly, and walk humbly with their God. What a different world we would be living in. Well, imagine it, I'm saying, because that's the power of imagination. Now, all of these politicians, like them or lump them, they're all God's creatures. They're all individual expression of spirit, as we are. And the only thing you get to do, and I get to do for all of them, is to bless them. Good, bad, and indifferent is to bless them into the amazing, the amazing, emerging, wonderful, infinite intelligence that is within them. Bless them. And of course, always bless ourselves likewise into that infinite intelligence that is within us so that we can act intelligently, think intelligently, feel intelligently, and speak intelligently, and do intelligently. Or as Thich Nhat Hanh would say, act more spiritually skillfully. That's for us all now. So whatever it is you are thinking, I am thinking, you are feeling, I am thinking, you are believing, I am believing, you are saying, I am saying, is it? Is it demonstrative of acting justly, loving tenderly, and walking humbly with God? Is it demonstrative of respect for innate freedoms in every individual's life? Is it unifying? Is it blessing? Is it looking for the connective point where we can reach some kind of understanding and consequently some kind of an agreement that would create a world that works for everyone. Is there any point in just talking about this all the time, reminding ourselves of this all of the time, if we're not actually actively working and putting action underneath what we say we believe? There's no more time. This is the time. We're running out of that kind of time to get it when we wake up. We wake up now, we don't wake up at all. I think it's wonderful that you and I have the privilege of knowing what we know, have been exposed to what we have been exposed to, and have been thus empowered by the truth that sets free. Now, of course, we forget ourselves, and of course, of course, we're part of the problem as well as the solution. But at least I'm believing that for each and every one of us, when we do, when we do not get it right, it's because we've fallen asleep and it's not really what we wanted to do, but we can quickly shake ourselves and wake ourselves up again and get back on track and get up on that pony and keep riding. We'll fall off the horse. God knows we fall off the horse. No wonder we're so sore. We fall off the horse of good, but we have the ability to get back up again and ride on into the embodiment of those beliefs that we hold dear to us, that all are created equal with equal right to freedom and liberty and the right to happiness. Because you and I can't make this an intellectual activity only, or just say we believe in it uh, uh, mindfully. Speaking of mindfulness, I came across a very good definition of mindfulness very recently, and it is to be present, to be present, engaged in the moment now without judgment. Oh, there's the kicker. There's the kicker, without judgment. And that is hard. Now, I am not saying that you and I have to love up on people who are hell-bent on separating, dividing, upsetting, and disrupting. We are not. We are not even. We don't have to like what they do, but we do have to bless them. We do have to wish for them goodwill and peace 
for them. That's what we have to do and genuinely mean it. But you don't have to hang out with them and you don't have to be in their company because they're not safe. They're not safe to have around where little children are or where innocent people are listening and believing what they're saying. We don't have to, but we do have to bless and know the best for each and every one of us. And it's like Jesus said, Father, forgive us, for we know not what we do, not about himself, but for us. Father, forgive them. They don't know what they're doing. They haven't a clue. If they had, they wouldn't dare. And we wouldn't dare if we knew what we were doing when we do that. If anybody in your life is disruptive, if anybody in your life is divisive, if anyone in your life is bound on dichotomizing everything and everyone, run, run, run. That's not who we are. That's not why we're here. And the purpose of your life and mine is to give God, to give the infinite, to give life and light and love a channel for expression. That's the only reason why you and I are here. To give that open receptivity and channel to the infinite within us that only chose us to be in form so that it could express itself through us by means of us, could know its godly self by means of you, and could know its godly self by means of me. It's the only why we're in existence. To love, to honor, to respect all of life, and to be servants in service to life unfolding and support and assist evolution along the path of good. It's a big reason why we're here, and we should be in awe of it. We should be absolutely awed and stunned by such a magnificent empowerment. Stunned. Now again, last week I was talking about the power of joy, the power of joy, because we're here simply to be God's delight and to delight God by means of you and by means of me and to give God delight by the way we live our lives, to have a delightful God expressing through you and through me. That's why we're here. And in the beginning, I didn't get this for a long, 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 long time because I thought, how can you be in joy when you're just absolutely as sad as all get up? and you have the burdens of the world upon your shoulder, well, let me tell you, that's the golden key, is it not, as I reminded us. Take your mind off your problem and put your mind on God. Put your mind on life, the fullness of life, which is God. Take your mind off the problem, and it doesn't matter what the experience is, big, little, or small, take your mind off it. Do not give it any power. Do not empower it. Every time you think about it, you empower it, you keep it going. But if it's not in your mind, it cannot be in your life, it cannot exist. There's nothing to feed it. So you take your mind off your problem and you put your mind on delight, on joy. And I was saying this morning, can you just imagine a world in which you were strong enough and able enough and surrendered enough and open enough and trusting in the creative process of life enough to laugh in the face of any adversity, to laugh in its face, to dance in its presence, to sing before it and to dance with joy. As the scriptures all say, how do you enter into the presence of God? Singing for joy, dancing and singing for joy is the answer. And who knew it was that easy and that challenging to realize the good that you desire, to be in joy all of the time, because what does joy do? Joy brings peace. And where there is joy and peace, love automatically is because that's what keeps us joyous and peace-filled. So it all boils down to three things. Joy, peace, love. This is what Yahweh asks of you, only this, that you act justly. Now, it's all based on acting justly. If you don't act just, justly, you may think you're as loving as all get up, but you're not. You may think you're as humble as all get up, but you're not. To act justly. 
which is to be present here and now connected without judgment. And again, I'll go to judgment because you and I are practiced, hard practiced in judging and, judge and discriminating. But we are warned there can be no judgment without information. There can be no discrimination without investigation. And most of us are doing that without information and investigation. We're doing it on a feeling, on the collective consciousness of my group, my family, my tribe, whatever. And when you see it, I'm telling you, it's so clear in the political arena. It's like those sides put on their jersey, like in a football game, and it doesn't matter what's going on, my team is right and deserve to win. Can't be that anymore. We have learned over and over again it doesn't work. We have to be very, very careful about where we're moving now. We thought we got rid of we thought we got rid of, in the 60s, that terrible thing called racism, and we thought we got rid of McCarthyism in, in the 50s or 40s even. But I'm beginning to see little refrains of that cropping up here, there, and yonder. So let's be done with that. Let it leave that where it belongs in the past and make a new and beautiful future for our darling children who deserve a better world than we can leave them right now at this minute. They do, do they not deserve that? Of course they do. And this divisiveness is a killer. I mean, there's a, a story about, and I'm glad that this, 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 these people learned, but the, the story about the, the little group, it just goes to show you there are so many of us who live on the fringes, who live like outsiders, who live marginalized. And they're all around us, these people. They're around us now, and they're all ages. But anyway, this, this junior high school was having a drama group working together for one season, and they were producing a show at the end of it. But two of the children had nothing to do with it, because one of them couldn't dance, it was mainly dancing, and the other one had broken her arm. And they just felt left out of the whole thing. And when the concert eventually came was put on, they just sat in the locker room feeling sorry for themselves, because they weren't included. And when one of those children grew up to be an adult, decided that you know they could have been given a part, made some, they could have um, played the music, or you know they could have helped out uh, behind the scenes in some way uh, to be part of the whole thing, so that they could feel connected. But they didn't. But one of them became a teacher. And she decided that no pupil of hers, no matter who or what, or for any reason, would ever feel left out of anything that would happen in her classes. We learn. We learn. Now, that's a very simple little example of how we are. Look at your family. Is there anybody feeling marginalized, left out on the fringes in your family? Is there anybody in the various and sundry groups that you belong to feeling left out, marginalized, forgotten? Is there anybody within the spiritual communities we all are engaged in who feel marginalized, left out, and not included? See, there are plenty of things that we can do. Never underestimate the power of the difference that you make in the world wherever you are. Wherever you are. For God's sakes, we can all put a smile on someone's face every day. Really, we can. Sometimes when you're laughing at yourself, you're so funny, everybody else is laughing around you. Uh, you know, we can raise that energy. We can raise that energy. We can certainly make a difference in a lonely person's life. We can certainly make a difference by a phone call or a word or some small little gesture. That's all we're asked. To be mindful enough to be able to do that, to be in service in that way, to just take care of each other and keep away from danger, keep away from toxicity. Keep away from that. Bless, bless, bless those engaged in all of that. Wish them well. Know for them that spirit within them is awakening and bringing them back home to the true essence of their being. That's what you do, even to the Hitlers amongst us. That's what we do. 
But we certainly don't make them friends and invite them home for tea, do we? No, because as I say, be careful where you have children around and so on and so forth, because they're very impressionable and we impress very easily, all of us, but especially children. We must always safeguard the children and the innocent. So my big thing is you will tell a society by the way it treats its children and by the way it treats its elders, its uh, vulnerable elders, you will, and of course its animals. So you and I have a big responsibility placed on our shoulders, but guess what? We're inherently empowered and equal to meeting that responsibility and meeting it hugely well. Because all we have to do is to act justly Love tenderly and walk humbly with our God, and you can do it. Why? Because you're loaded. You are so loaded with the gift of spirit. And remember, I'm always going to remember this at the end of our times together. You are a point of power through which the infinite and all of its radiant magnificence expresses itself. What more do we need to know? And so it is. Make the difference. Make the difference.